Hello master. Hello master. Hi, how you know it's me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very easy to recognize. Yeah, okay. It's good. I like to talk this way because you guys are always ready. Yes. Always anytime, even late or early morning or late night and anywhere. So, thank you for this. It makes me feel welcome as if you really like to hear me. Talking to you, my voice. Yes, master. As if. <laughs> We're glad to hear from master yes. very much. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yes, master. We are. Then it's good. Then it's good. Are you all okay after moving again? Yes, yes, yes master. We are, okay. we are fine. Yeah, I try to get used to the new environment. It doesn't matter. It's all work anyway. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Not like okay, we like this scenery or we like this sightseeing. <laughs> no, no such thing, huh? Sorry, <laughs> really sorry. I appreciate that you guys uh, easy going. Uh, I'm sorry you had to keep moving recently. It's okay, master. It's okay, It's okay master. master. Ah, anyway, join the club. <laughs> 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 join my club. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we don't mind going. Just it's a lot of equipment and yeah, uh, arrangements and have to work fast. Have to work also. Yes. When we're moving, it's sometimes like uh, delaying or obstructing work a little bit. That's all we care about. Otherwise, it doesn't matter where. It's all in God's realm. In our mind, it's always God's realm. Yes, yes, master. Yes, master. master. Uh, yeah. This world is like that. It's not all simple, you know. It always has a lot of borders, a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of visa problems. That's the problem. But we won't be long in this world, so be patient. Just endure it. Understand. Yes, master. Well, to stay master. No matter how many problems, it won't be long. <laughs> we won't stay here forever in this world. Yes. Yes, yes master. master. Yeah. We will go home <laughs> at the end of our life. It's not all that uh, long. I remember that when you saw some shows and you picked some of my old, old, old times, like 20, 30 years ago photos. They look young and beautiful. Yes, <laughs> I like yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> and just in the blink of an eye, now I am much older than at that time. Much, much older. It's so fast, yeah. Mm. I just want to see if you're all right and everything's good. Do you have good food and people buy food for you, take good care of you? Yes. Yes, yes master. Yes, we have, master. Okay, don't spare on that. Yes. You must have good food and all the vitamins I told you to take. You have, right, all of you? Yes, yes master. We have. Yes, we, we have, have, master. Yeah, I told all of you, I mean... I can only take care of the in-house. The outside people know everything. They can take care of themselves. <laughs> okay. Then it's good. Anything you want to tell me or ask me or report? Uh, yes, Master, we have some news to report. Oh, tell me. Yes. Uh, the First Lady of uh, Ukraine, Olena Zelenska, uh, has urged the UK to unite the war and help mm. end the war in Ukraine. She's comparing yeah. the Ukraine suffering to that of the UK in World War Two. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Not just the UK, but you know, many countries in the world truly have experienced terrible, terrible, terrible disasters from the war. Yes, master. Yes, master. So many decades, and you know, all these centuries as well. Just long ago, we did not have so much correspondence like nowadays. Information is easier to obtain today than long ago. Yeah, during World War One or World War Two, for example. Otherwise, war is always terrible, terrible. Yes, master. Yes, master. And I hope the whole world really helps Ukraine. 
meaning Ukraine, of course, to regain their peace because they've done nothing wrong. All they do is just plant food to feed the world in their own peaceful and humble way. They don't deserve this. It's terrible. Every time I read some news about Ukraine suffering during the war, oh, I cry so much. I cry so much. I told God I cannot cry anymore because of the suffering of the animals, people, and people. But I just cry again. I just did. Some time ago, even maybe 20 minutes ago, before I, I call you, I just can't help it. I cannot help crying. My heart just is in so much pain. So much pain, so much pain. <laughs> I don't know what kind of world we live in that has to be like this. Why? My God, so much money is spent on the war, you know, that that all this money will, will help all the people in the world and nobody ever has to be hungry or suffer any need at all. We can even build houses for everyone and give them all the food they need, everything they need, I mean, the basics. Yes, yes, master. yes, master, we understand. This doesn't have to be luxury or anything, but they could have a home and food on the table. Yes. And now all this money is spent just for quelling people, inflicting pain on anyone, it's women and children even. They do nothing wrong. It is a crazy world, crazy world. Of course. <laughs> she also stated that Russia has brought systematic violence, rape and torture to women, children and men in her country. And it's important also for us to understand that sexually related crimes is not just about violence or threatening. In fact, this is another instrument that they're using as their weaponry. This is another weapon in their arsenal in this war conflict. That's why they're using this systematically and openly. They're very open about this. That is why it's extremely important to recognize this as a war crime and to bring all the perpetrators to accountability. The youngest girl who was raped by the Russian occupiers was four years old. The oldest survivor was 85. These are the victims we know. How many victims we still don't know about? This kind of brutal bad behavior makes a very terrible reputation for Russia as a whole. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I, I also read some of this. Also, it is said that the Russian soldiers, they are, they are very open about it. They even tell their wives about the raping women and children system there. And the woman didn't even stop it. Did not say, don't do it, don't do it. As a woman to woman, how can this be? They say, okay, you can do it, just don't tell me. Meaning, don't tell her. Wow. Don't tell the Russian wife. It's been kind of encouraging. How can a woman be like that to another woman? Suppose she herself, the Russian wife of these soldiers, is being raped and tortured or her children or her boys are being raped, molested, and tortured like that. How would she feel? Yes, Master. I don't know why the Russians... I don't think all the Russian people are like this. That's it for sure. And maybe only those who are so brainwashed or evil in their mind. Otherwise, nobody can do this. Why do the Russian people or these Russians who participate in or encourage this system want to give Russia... Such a devilish reputation in the world and in history. Right. How can anybody ever trust Russians again? 
any Russian. Yes. The Mexican people were frightened of Russians and distrust and be disgusted with the Russian people. And this is terrible. Is it not fair for the good Russians? Yes, yes master. Yes, master. Oh, God, I don't know what to say anymore. It's terrible. As a woman myself, this is horrible to hear that some Russian women even support it or not discourage it. Yes, yes, yes master. master. Like these Russians, how do they even lift their faces up and look at other people or look into their own mirror? What kind of demons have they become and influencing others in their country to make their country become such a demonic nation that is abhorred by the whole planetary citizens? That I don't understand how they want to do that and why. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yeah. How can they support such a demonic war and brutal system like that? And even on TV, on their own TV and all that, supporting these kinds of things and supporting more violence. Oh, my God. What a country. What a system. What a government. Oh, this is truly, truly unthinkable. You know, normally in society, if somebody rapes somebody, not to talk about children, men, and no woman, even. They will be accused as criminal and will be put in jail and punished accordingly. Yes, yeah, indeed. Right. Yes. So I don't know why a wife of a dignified soldier, even if she believes that he fights for a good cause, would want to agree to encourage to make her husband into a criminal like that. Yes, right. Yes, yes master. master. And Russia, leaders of Russia, I don't understand you. Why? Not only do you take criminals out of prisons to fight for your so-called justified war, but you also want to make your citizens become criminals as well. A quiet rural neighborhood shattered by barbaric violence. In a village west of Kyiv, a first-hand account of rape by invading soldiers. A soldier entered our house. My husband and I were there. At gunpoint, he took me to a neighboring house. He was ordering me, take your clothes off or I'll shoot you. Then he started raping me. She returned home to find her husband shot in the abdomen. He died two days later. She buried him in the backyard. I found drugs and Viagra that they left behind. They would get high and they were drunk. Most of the invading soldiers are killers, rapists and looters. I want to ask Putin, why is this happening? I don't understand. We're not living in the Stone Age. Just up the road, we heard of another rape case. This is the house a woman was taken to and assaulted. Upstairs, the bedroom where she was later killed. It's a disturbing scene. We travelled 70 miles east to another village. To what used to be the home of a family. The woman who lived in this house managed to escape along with her child. She called the Ukrainian police and she's given them her testimony. She's told them she was raped multiple times by the two drunk Russian soldiers who killed her husband. And she said they threatened to kill her little boy too if she didn't do exactly as they said. As the soldiers left, they burned down the house. In Kyiv, we met Ukraine's human rights ombudsman, Lyudmila Denisova, who's been recording rape cases. About 25 girls and women aged 14 to 24 were raped during the occupation in the basement of one house in Bucha. Nine of them are pregnant. A 25-year-old woman called 
to tell us her 16-year-old sister was raped in the street in front of her. To calculate the number of such sexual crimes is impossible at the moment, because not everyone has come to us, not everyone is willing to talk to us. Where does justice go now? What kind of country do you want to make your nation become? What kind of people do you want to turn your citizens into? What kind of reputation do you want to show the whole community of the world? What kind of worthy cause can you justify for yourself? Ask yourself and kneel forever on your knees to ask humans to forgive you. Not to talk about asking God to forgive you yet. I hope you have a tiny little weeny bit of a mustard seed of belief in the judgment of God to do that. Even if you have lost all of your dignity or your self-esteem already, which I believe you did. You did lose all that, all that matters to be a gentleman in this world. <coughs> you know, I still bother myself to ask you this question because I do miss Russia, the Russian people who have been so kind to me that I don't forget the moral standard that they had to help me in very little things that I appreciate it. I miss Russia, the country that I could have been even free enough to go there, to be accepted, to make a lecture in Moscow, the capital of your country. I miss that country. I miss that Russia. Yes, yes, Master. Where does that Russia go? Under your leadership. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you, shame on all of you who support your crazy, brutal, evil cause of war in Ukraine or anywhere else. Shame on you. You should be repenting forever. If you even have any IQ or any little morals left to do that, I will pray that hell will spare you. But I am not sure of my prayers would be effective in your case. And it's not too difficult to imagine that these so-called soldiers, when they come back to your country, having been misled into this kind of indecent, cruel, wicked taste of raping people, they might continue to do that in your country, maybe to your wife, your lovers, your Partners, your children, good luck that it won't happen to you and your other innocent citizens. And when they come back to your country and they commit the same sin, the same crime, then in a peaceful time, they will be punished or be jailed according to the civilized law. But this crime has been taught during the war by their own leaders of their own nation. Is that the thing that you can accept? Anybody can accept? No, no, no master. master. No. And for the woman who almost like encouraged your husband in a foreign land to rape all the women and all the little children, boys or girls or men, do you think this is a noble thing to do? Why would you want a criminal this ugly, filthy, brutal criminal as a husband and as a father of your children. The women or men or young boys, young girls, little children, they have nothing to do with the politics in Ukraine or anywhere else. They held me in captivity for five days, and those were horrible five days. I was interrogated by the local collaborators. I was beaten, humiliated, and had to undergo continuous tortures. At one point, I realized that I just stopped being a person. They were not treating me as a human. 
Elisa had been filming a documentary when she was captured in the Donetsk region. She was sexually abused by a Russian commander. And he forced me to uh, take out of my clothes and take a bath in front of him. Uh, and after he didn't let me put any clothes on me, only like a small towel, and he put his gun in front of me, and he was cleaning his gun, and he was just enjoying his power, that he can, can do whatever he wants, and I could do nothing, uh, almost naked, next to him, uh, and after he tried to rape me. Our own teams in Ukraine have seen evidence of this. We filmed at this house in a village outside Kyiv, where two Russian soldiers allegedly raped two Ukrainian women. One of them was Vika, who told us why she wanted to share her ordeal. Twenty-eight-year-old Olena and her husband Sasha were living in Hostomel when the war started. In early March, while she was out looking for water, Olena was captured by Russian troops, she says, held hostage in a one-room apartment for two days. But it was about to get even worse. So this is the worst crime that your citizen can commit, your husband can commit. Please tell them, stop it, or they all will go to hell. I mean, forever, like the leaders together. Be forever in hell, burning in there, tortured, raped, and molested, and all kinds of punishments. Mm -hmm. How can anybody... Even during war, systematically tell their shoulders to rape these harmless women and children, young boys or girls or men. And how can any woman encourage their own husband to brutally, evilly force this woman into such kind of torture, rape? This is beyond human. Beyond beasts, even the beasts in the jungle, they don't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So what kind of Russia is it that your leaders and you women want it to be? What kind of Russia do you want it to be? I mean, what kind of a nation do you want Russia to become? What kind in the whole world. How can you face anybody on this planet? Hmm? Think about it. Go home, go back to Russia and apologize to the whole world. Hopefully, humans will forgive you. Is there anything else? Yes, yes, must. Tell me. People have criticized the Princess of Wales, Princess Catherine, for wearing an expensive diamond brooch valued at £14,000 during UK's current economic hardships at a state banquet. Some say she should rather have donated that to a worthy charity cause. Huh. I don't know what these people think. She's a future queen of Great Britain. So she wear something like from a Walmart? Oh, no. Mm. No, no, master. No, master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that is a state dinner, and the first state dinner for King Charles III. And they are having guests from other countries, like the president of South Africa. Yes. Ah, uh, people are like that. I mean, maybe it's an alum from her family, uh, her friends or her relatives gave it to her. And this is the first banquet for King Charles III. So, of course, she wants to look the best to represent a country. Yes. Yes, Master. And in every country, there are rich people and poor people. You can't help it. As I told you already, all this crazy war and spending on killing instead. And even if England did not make war, the war in other countries also involved the UK. Then they also have to spend a lot of money on that, on the war. Since World War One and World War Two already. Yes, Master. Yes, Master.
But uh, in England's system, they really take care of people, as far as I know. Like, if the family has problems and the children are not well cared for, they will take care of the children. Yes. And if the parents don't look after the children well, then the children will be like the queen's children. The government will take care, will pay for houses, for their school, for their college, and for all the expenses that the children need until they grow up more and have jobs or and earning their own money. Understood. Yes, Master. Yes. This is a very good system. And every country has poor and rich because the world is like that nowadays. Yes, Master. The money is not spent on truly good causes. And one bad country infects the other countries, for example. Right. But even if the Princess of Wales, Catherine, donated that brooch for any charity cause, it won't last too long either. Yes, yeah, indeed. Right. Yes. Even if she donates everything she has, <laughs> and excuse me, just a wear <laughs> pyjama <laughs> to go to the <laughs> state <laughs> banquet, still it won't help the whole country. It won't last long. Yes, right. Yes, yes master. master. The whole society has to change systems. Yes. And the whole country's citizens have to chip in to help. Yes, yes, yes master. Ta lặng yên, thế thế bao chuyện nghiệp Từng đời ca, như mật rót vào tim Tuôn lấn lấn, theo cung bước êm đềm Trong rung cả ẩm, ta ngỡ ngàng